place-based foundation is a little bit different than a national or a, a large, let's say, statewide uh, funder. We are, by the compact uh, with the state and the tribe, we provide resources to the Koala Boundary and to seven counties in Western North Carolina. And being place-based does have challenges, but we really see those as opportunities. Um, for example, we give a lot of grants to the same people over and over. But on the other hand, that allows us to develop a, a relationship, a long-term relationship that we learn from each other and uh, create uh, some opportunities that perhaps you would not have in uh, other types of, of uh, grant makers. The foundation has been um, working uh, for the last 10 years and I have noticed over the last several years that we have gone from what I would call a transactional relationship to a transformational relationship. And in a transactional relationship, it's um, we would give you the money and you would do the project. As we move to the transformational relationship, we begin a relationship, we begin learning from each other, um, we begin looking at things a little bit differently, and often there is some action uh, on the part of both the funder and the grantee as a result of that. We have created an environment for that to occur that you may not see uh, with, with other funders. And that environment uh, has three components. One is uh, grantees learning new tools and skills. We might call that capacity building. Uh, at the individual level, at the organizational level, and at the community level. And it's really bringing best practices to uh, all, of, all of our work. The second component is bringing people together. And that's convening, uh, learning from each other, and really creating a learning organization or community uh, where if I have a, a particular problem I can go to another grantee that's already had that a problem and has figured out how to do that. The third uh, uh, element is partnership development. And that is both on the boundary as well as in the region and nationally. Um, and being able to bring uh, other resources uh, into the boundary and to the region that they may not have been aware of. Um, learning new tools and skills is essential for an organization to uh, move toward what I call a sustainable future. And an excellent example is what we, uh, how we worked with the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, which that's a very important organization uh, locally. For a while, they, when they came to us, uh, they had difficulty finding the match. Uh, we have a 50% match, and so we were very proactive, and we went to them and said, we'd like for you, along with us, to form a partnership to develop the skills for fundraising. And so they did, and over a six-month period, their staff, their board, learned about fundraising because they were uh, adding a new educational wing. And so uh, it was interesting that um, when they had the kickoff for the campaign, they had a reception and a dinner at the museum. It had about 30 to 40 people there uh, and had a nice uh, dinner and then uh, asked for you know, some support and they were surprised to find that they were able to garner $150,000 from local people 
and they were surprised, but we had never asked for that support. Uh, and so now they have those skills and those skills will continue over time and we have found that now it's no problem for getting the match because they have that fundraising skill. Um, a good example around bringing people together or what you can also call it convening and a good example of how uh, we brought the whole community together to look at a vision for the future was something called Vision Koala. And we invited 30 uh, people, local people from the uh, tribal government, uh, community members, artists, uh, nonprofit organizations, and some people from the region. And over a six month uh, course, we were able to the group was able to really articulate a vision for the next 15 years for uh, what we wanted Cherokee to look like. And actually that is still kind of our blueprint uh, 10 years later. I think partnerships is a kind of underused opportunity in, uh, in uh, the foundation world. And, I think that's a particularly a way that we've been able to as being a place-based uh, that you can connect. An example uh, is our Western North Carolina educational uh, network. And we realized that the tribe was doing a redundant ring for broadband. And of course that was, you know, a, a for-profit effort. And so we began working with the local, our local Cherokee uh, Central School and uh, the school systems in the six counties. And we began thinking about how could we, along with other funders, uh, for instance, like uh, Golden Leaf or uh, App uh, Appalachian Regional Commission, how could we all come together put those resources together to be able to have broadband for the local schools in the area. So it took a couple years, uh, a lot of work, a lot of partnership, a lot of convening, but now we have broadband for over 60 schools in the seven, in the seven county area. Uh, that means that we have uh, public schools, charter schools, uh, community colleges and universities. Well, I think the future of the foundation and the future of this community of Cherokee and the region is very bright. I think um, we now have some new skills uh, that skill, those skills, new skills will continue. And I think the most important thing is that we collaborate uh, that we get together and uh, look at what those issues are and then find workable solutions and um, tap foundations like ourselves and others to help make that uh, come to fruition, uh, particularly because we're really working in this region and particularly on the boundary for a sustainable future.